Hey, what's going on YouTube? Ryland here in the garage gym and have you ever ran on a treadmill and you feel it slip and you can just feel that little glitch when you're running? I'm gonna show you how to fix that today and how to basically lubricate your treadmill so you can get that fixed up. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. Hey, welcome back to today's tech tip. And we're talking about treadmill maintenance. One of my biggest pet peeves is when a treadmill slips and you find that a lot in commercial gyms. The reason for that is commercial gyms just aren't getting as much maintenance as they probably should have. And these belts will stretch out over time. So if they go and replace the belts, put new belts in, they will loosen off over a certain amount of time and you have to go back and tighten up the rollers. So basically I'll give you a quick, just a rundown on how these treadmills work. You have a power roller on one side and then a free roller on the other side. The motor is what's powering that other roller, which in turn is turning this belt, which is just a, a thin piece of woven nylon basically with some um, texture on it. And then underneath the belt, you have your smooth running surface. In this case, it's a piece of uh, wood or melamine with a very smooth flat surface on it. Some of these treadmills don't require any lubrication at all, like a Life Fitness and some of the new commercial stuff. So check it with your brand, you know, before you go ahead and do this, but you can definitely tighten and adjust the belt with the way I'm gonna show you how to do it. First, we'll talk about the tools you're gonna need. So you're gonna need a set of Allen keys, most likely metric. Most of these treadmills are made um, overseas, so metric, um, Allen keys and they all adjust very similar so this the process I'm going to show you on this particular life fitness one here would work with this other life fitness or Precore or Matrix brand they're all very similar in the way that they adjust you can also get a ratchet and then an Allen socket kind of set up like this that I have I like this better and I'll show you why in a minute most treadmills are going to use a hundred percent silicone um, type lubricant so make sure that you read your manual find out what kind of lubricant you need to use you're better off to do nothing than put the wrong lubricant on it. So another thing you want to get is a piece of paper and a pen of some sort to jot down some measurements that we'll talk about. And then also a small ruler or a tape measure. Um, you're going to need that. And a rag as well. So those are your basic tools as we go through it. We'll see if we need to add anything, but I think that's going to pretty much cover what we need to do. Now that we have everything together, you're going to find two Allen adjustment screws on the end of the roller block on the back of your treadmill. And there's one here and there's one there. But before we adjust those, I always like to take a measurement and just find out where the treadmill belt is sitting. And what I'm talking about is this belt sits on this roller here and it can move left to right if the tension is not equal on both of these bolts. So these adjustment screws, if you have one of them that's really tight and the other one's loose, it's gonna pull the belt over to the left or right depending on where the looser um, tensioning screw is. So what I do before I even start is I'm gonna just do a quick sketch of our roller here. I'm gonna measure that distance right there. And it was exactly half inch. And that was on both sides. And that just tells me that before I messed with this and before I touched it, the belt was evenly spaced about half an inch on each side, give or take, maybe a sixteenth or so. If you know where you started, it sure helps when you go back to, to uh, tension it back up. The first thing we need to do is loosen off the tensioners on the roller and what that's going to allow us to do is loosen the belt off so that we can get underneath it with our rag and clean off the dust and everything else which we're going to show you in a second but when you go to loosen these you're going to loosen them by turning counterclockwise the nice thing about using this ratchet is you need to count how many turns you loosen it off and then record it and the reason for that is when we go back to tension this back up, 
it's going to save us so much time. We're going to be able to just go back the same amount of turns. I already know this is really close to where it should be. I might tweak it a little bit tighter, but this will get me very close. So count your turns when you loosen this off and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. That was exactly six turns on one side and you can feel that got nice and loose. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we've got six turns on both sides. Record that on your sheet. Just do it six times on both sides. And that was counterclockwise. You wanna wipe down the surface underneath here. And don't, don't worry about, you don't have to get super crazy with this. If you're inside a, a gym like this, if you're in a very dusty environment, say your garage, you use it as a garage regularly bringing cars in and out and you've got a lot of leaves and dust and, and whatever embedded onto this, then you'll really want to get a really good cleaning on it. But for this gym, it doesn't get super dusty and that's just a matter of taking your rag and wiping underneath it. And the first thing I'm going to do is wipe along the sides of both sides and then I'll try to get the rag underneath and wipe it. So I'm just cleaning the entire belt and I'm just gonna go all the way through. I know I started where the lettering was, so we're just gonna keep going and get the whole thing. We've used our rag, we got under the belt, we cleaned the whole thing on the bottom underside of it. The next step is actually lubricating your belt and the way you're gonna do that is pull this up and then you're gonna spray underneath. And you don't have to go super crazy with this. Do one side and then go ahead and spray the other side. Naturally, as that silicone is under there, it's gonna end up spreading around because it's gonna get on the back side of this belt anyway. So now you can rotate that and just as long as you get a good spray underneath there. It doesn't have to be soaking wet. The easy part, because we've recorded how many turns, we're gonna go back here. Now we're going clockwise, same thing. Record where you start. So right there, six turns. There's six, and now we'll do the other side, six turns. There's six turns. Now, right away you're gonna notice that your gaps might be different. You can see on this one here, it's a little bit too far there and it's a little bit too tight on this side. Don't stress about your gaps. Oop, I better get in the frame. So don't stress about your gaps just yet because the next step is we're gonna turn the machine on and now that we've got more lubricant under there, we might have to tighten it up a little bit to keep it from slipping. Turn the machine on. You can just go at a walking pace and let's let the rollers stabilize where the belt's gonna sit. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at the measurements again. I'll adjust the frame and we'll walk on the treadmill for a minute. Just for the sake of the video, I set it up so one side's gonna be more tight than the other one because I wanna show you how this works. But it's easier to do this when it's running too. So you can see here, this side's obviously got a way bigger gap than this side here. That side's obviously really tight. So to fix that, is pretty simple. What we're gonna do is go over to this side here, if this is your in your case, and we're going to loosen this side off. So here we go. We'll loosen it off right there. So counterclockwise, and you can see the belt starting to walk back over already. So now I'm gonna get back on the treadmill, walk a little bit, and let's see if it settles out. Okay, so the belt is definitely better. It's very close. Again, I simulated if you had a, a difference in, in, um, in tension on each side. If we put our ruler back on there and we look at it, let's have a look. Uh, okay, so we have a little ways to go still. We gotta move it still about, 
eighth of an inch. There's two ways you can do that. You can loosen this side and see if that will pull it back over or we can tighten the other side. So let's tighten the other side and see what happens. Okay, so I just did a quarter turn on the other side. Remember, we're not making super aggressive moves and a quarter turn, I can start to see some of that silver underneath there was probably too much. This side's close, that side's uh, it's pretty close. Let's put the ruler back on, have a look and see what we have. Oh, we're actually almost bang on the money right there. Let's go check the other side. The next thing to do is go run on the treadmill, see if it's gonna slip and then come back. Now, if it's gonna slip and you've got your side to side all set up, all you have to do now is just do like a quarter turn tightening evenly left to right and just tension the belt a little bit more. That felt really good. Now, this might be something you might have to revisit, you know, in a couple days after a few runs or whatever, but you'll notice right away if it's gonna slip, especially when you just do a light jog like that. So with everything shut down, you do a little light run on it, grab your ruler, check and see how you're doing on your gap. We are real, real close. Close enough that we're within a couple sixteenth. I would just leave it right there. You don't want to over tension your belt and you know put undue wear and tear on your motor and on your um, rollers. So once you're at that, you know, say you're at that point where it's slipping, you just need a little more, just enough more tension to get it to stop slipping. You don't want to keep going. So I'm happy there. We'll run on that for, for a week or so, see how it feels and if we need to, we can always tweak it a little bit more. But this is a common thing you should be adjusting and lubricating your, your treadmill, probably depending on how much you run every six months, it's just gonna prolong the wear and the, how long your belt lasts. On these old commercial style treadmills, they last a long time. It's definitely worth doing. That is a quick tech tip on how to adjust your treadmill, keep it from slipping and lubricate it. So if you got any questions or concerns or whatever, throw it down in the comments and I'll see if I can help you with that. So thanks again for watching and have a good one.